And now, a can't-miss moment from The Charlie James Show. So the Republicans are asking for $1.5 trillion in spending, and how much do the Democrats want? Um, well, the, the last fiscal year, the Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Joe Biden omnibus spending bill that was passed around Christmas last year was $1.646 trillion mm. in, uh, in, in discretionary spending. So uh, we're cutting that by... 20% at 1.526, cut it by 30% at 1.471. I, I, you know, a lot of people around when, when folks were running for Congress and they were saying, you should vote for us and we need to win the House because the House has the power of the purse. Um, is it time to exercise that power and get some of these initiatives that conservatives actually want done? Well, the, the whole play is we've got to fund government. This is a 30-day CR, which is what it would be at those at whatever number you pick, 1.526 or 1.471, um, and get back on the appropriations bills because why wow, that's important. We break government into 12 different bites, whether it's DOJ or whether it's Homeland Security or whether it's DOD, uh, whether it's uh, labor and HHS. So we break government up, and then we write appropriations bills for each of those blocks of agencies. And what we get in the appropriations bills, we do get the spending levels for those agencies or those group of agencies, but we also get policy writers in there that direct the agencies on how they can or cannot spend the money. So if we want to deny the 87,000 IRS agents, we do it through an appropriations bill. If we want to end the wokeism at the Department of Defense, we do it through an appropriations bill. If we want to secure the border, we do it through an appropriations bill. If we want to stop the weaponization of, uh, of these federal agencies, mm -hmm. we do it on the DOJ's appropriations bill, the one that handles uh, FBI. So that's why it's so important to get this 30-day CR done so we can continue the appropriations process here and get on those policy writers and direct these agencies to stop all the bad things the Biden administration is doing uh, against America. So if I'm not mistaken, what you just said is we have to spend this $1.5 trillion in order to get something done in Washington? Well, that's about the spending level now. So yeah. it's actually a 1.526, a 20% cut off current level of spending. So it's actually cutting spending. We've got to fund government. Um, so this would be a 30-day, that number would be a 30-day right. number. And then the appropriations bills, individual appropriations bills be passed by the House. That's where the appropriations process starts and the constitutional role that we have. And really put the onus on the Senate. Um to secure the border. Border policy, border protection, HR2, a language for our border, will be included in anything we do in a short-term uh, continuing resolution and force the Senate's hand because it, this is the number one issue across America. And then the honest would be on the Senate and the White House to actually secure the border, stop fentanyl, stop human trafficking, stop this migra migration in our country of illegal aliens. We just saw train loads, 20,000 yeah. illegals crossed over the weekend. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what's going on on our southern border. Well, my big question is you, you, you're going to be uh, uh, requiring the Senate. You're putting the onus on the Senate, but we know how they're going to vote. And, and yeah, we, and, they, and, we, and, we, probably, and we know the White House yeah, is going to go along take with our it. Number. Yeah, they'll probably take our number, and the, their their numbers are already higher than what they passed uh, in in their committees. But they'll probably take our number, add Ukraine funding, add uh, and some supplemental for um, disaster relief. Probably plus up defense even further, and some of the other agencies. They'll ping pong it back. But it's time for the House of Representatives, and and that's all we control as Republicans, to actually stake our ground somewhere. We're going to stake our ground on a twenty or thirty percent cut to federal spending. We're also going to take take our ground on. It's time to secure our country, secure our nation as a sovereign nation. We ought to have border security and enforce the, the Democrats and the, the Senate to vote against border security. That's a losing proposition for them. And it's something that we've got to do, Charlie. That's the thing. This is some, uh, such an important issue for our nation. How Senate and White House has got to secure the border. So, you know, funding government at a lower level with 20 to 30 percent cuts and getting border security uh, is pretty good ground to stand on right now, given the makeup that we only control the House of Representatives. But why? I mean, my, my big question is because we always hear the power of the purse is in the House. Why not use that? Let the government shut down for a period of time until you get some actual commitments from these Democrats in the House and or in the Senate and from the White House that something is actually going to be done about border security and, and fentanyl and all of these other issues that Republicans are concerned about. Well, that's actually playing out because government's probably going to shut down for a period of time here. Um, 
And but but what happens? The longer the government shutdown happens, there are moderate Republicans in the House of Representatives that will join the Democrats. They'll use a mechanic um, called a discharge petition where they can immediately bring something to a vote on the floor. They will either bring what the Senate passes back, or they'll bring bring a clean CR at higher spending levels. Democrats and some moderate Republicans uh, will vote for that, and we'll get absolutely nothing for border security. We'll get higher spending. And we'll get no changes to policy. So they kill, they will take over the floor, control that vote, pass out a CR, which the Senate would uh, accept at higher spending levels, no border security and no nothing. So the, the, the plan is to try to put the honest on the Senate and, and get border security in it and lower spending levels. But the Senate's going to ping pong it back to us. But that's where the real fight begins with the United States Senate. Well, Rand Paul is saying that he's going to block any um, any uh, spending bill that has uh, increased funding for Ukraine. Is that a good idea? Well, I wonder how he's going to do that because uh, it, it you know it takes more than one senator to do that, and I hope he does. I'm not, I don't support Ukraine funding um, and and higher levels there. So we don't have any of that in our bill that we're discussing right now. It's ongoing. I stepped out of the conference committee right now. Mm-hmm talking about spending levels, talking about what we can, what is achievable. We, you know, you can go a bridge too far. And it's ironic that Operation Market Garden was going on in 1944 on September 17th through about the 22nd, right now, this time of year, where they went a bridge too far. We've got to look at what's achievable. And I think what is achievable is a lower number, 20 or 30 percent spending cut uh, from the Nancy Pelosi omnibus spending levels. It gets us back to pre-COVID spending levels and also get border security, I think that is achievable and it's not a bridge too far. Don't miss the Charlie James Show. Weekdays 3 to 7 on News Talk 98.9. WORD. The voice of the Carolinas.